Welcome to the third and final part of the Knitting Your First Sweater series. If you haven't seen the first and second part, in the first part we knitted our collar and our yoke, then in the second part we knitted our body and today in the third and final part we're knitting the sleeves and then finishing off our sweater. So let's get started! Welcome back! I hope that you had fun knitting up until now. I hope that you're actually also at the point where you were able to finish your body and are now ready to get into this third part of the knitting your first sweater series, the part where we will knit our sleeves and then finally finishing off our sweater so that you can actually wear your first sweater, the first sweater you made yourself. That's so awesome. But first I made another sheet of instructions that I uploaded onto Patreon and the instruction sheet is available also to non-patrons so you don't have to be a patron to get the these from there. But if you like this content, if you like this video series and if you want me to make more like these or just want some other bonus content, then please go and consider becoming a patron. I've been starting to post much more on there. So if that sounds interesting to you, please go over to Patreon and check that out. But without further ado, let's get into the knitting. Okay, now um, we finished the body and now we're going to start with our first sleeve. I have my stitch marker on hold here. I have the needles I'm going to attach, the pin to attach the needles. And I also got a crochet hook for help. This is one that is smaller than my knitting needle size, which I would recommend. So I have a 5.5 millimeter or US 9 hook here. Um, you can just get any hook that isn't too small to maybe use with this yarn, but also not too big. Um, or you can also do it with knitting needles. But now I'm going to, I'm going to attach the eight millimeter needles and take the stitch stoppers off here. Okay, and so for the sizes XS to L, um, we cast on four new stitches here. You can recognize these by the bumps you see here. And this means we are going to want to add four stitches from the underarm to our sleeve in total. But if we were to just get our four stitches from here, then afterwards um, the closing of the stitch here, kind of this pulling together, would leave a hole here. So what we're actually doing is um, on both sides of these stitches, we are going to pick up one extra stitch and these we're going to be um, knitting away later. But um, when we now start picking up, we want to pick up these as well. So I am already pushing up my needles on the... Okay, and now I have our gap here. And now I'm getting my working yarn. Okay, I got our working yarn. For me, there still are going to be um, two more rows with the yellow, um, the light yellow Suri Alpaca. So I also add them already onto these stitches that I'm going to pick up. And now we're starting on this side of the gap we have here with picking up stitches. And the first stitch I'm going to get is from the gap between here and the gap here where I'm going to first pick up my stitch. So kind of right in the middle, which I'd say is here, I'm picking up the first stitch. And what I'm also doing here, these stitches are facing up and these are kind of um, going vertically or horizontally rather. And instead of just going through one strand and then risking getting a hole like this, I'm going to go from under two strands so then there's less chance of there being another gap later. And then I'm just quickly getting my crochet hook here and putting the yarn over and pulling it through. And I find working with a crochet hook a bit easier because um, it gives me a bit more, I mean, the hook helps me to pull through. If I were to do it with the needle, then you need to wrap the yarn around really, really tightly and then um, go slowly through the gap so that you actually get it through. So using a crochet hook that is metal and has no handle here so that you can slip it off onto the needle here on the back later. But yeah, so this was the first stitch I picked up. Now, from now on, I'm always going to pick up stitches from an upwards facing V. So this would be a downwards facing V and then next to it, this is an upwards facing V. And so um, I usually, that is kind of my preference, 
you would actually pick up the stitch here that is next to this first stitch but I always go one under because I find that if I pick this stitch up then this um, bump here is visible from the outside later so I always go one below so I'm getting one from the first upwards facing V of the gap and um, when I count it there are actually one two three strands above um, of where I'm picking up the stitch so I'm going in here three strands below and I'm going to pick up another stitch so I've picked up two stitches so far now I'm going into the next gap and again one two three strands and this is an upwards facing V so I'm going here and grabbing the yarn again and now next gap again from the upwards facing V and three strands down that is a tongue twister <laughs> and then next gap one two three three strands down now I've picked up five stitches so far so now when I pull this up you can see um, you don't see the bump of the stitch above and now you're getting one more stitch from the gap here and now we're actually ready to transfer them onto our needle so we picked up six stitches and now when I transfer the stitches onto a needle, when I pick them up with a crochet hook, something I'm looking out for is when I look at the first stitch on the needle here, I see that the behind leg, so the leg that is um, in the back, is actually right leaning, whereas the front leg is left leaning. And I always want to stitch when it's on my needle, I want the front leg to be right leaning. So this means that this stitch is now twisted. And um, the way I change that is by not picking it up purl wise like this but I'm actually going to pick it up through the back loop like this and I'm holding the tail here so that it doesn't fall off my needle. So I'm picking it off like this. I have the same issue with this stitch. This is just from the direction we picked up the stitches in, but I always do that. And after picking up three stitches, so in the middle of my underarm gap, I'm going to place my stitch marker because this is the new beginning of the round. And then I will be transferring the last three stitches as well and um, I'm getting my knitting here, pulling up the stitches on the needle, um, putting the yarn through my fingers, and then I will just be knitting the next stitch. I'm pulling tight here so that it leaves as small as a, of a gap as possible. And then I will be just knitting around. And then when there are only four stitches left in front of the stitch marker, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the extra stitches. So just knit in the round here as you did in the on the body the same way. Now I have four stitches left and what you see here now is here is kind of the gap between the first picked up stitch and the last stitch of the sleeve that we had before. And now on this right side of the marker we are going to decrease the extra stitch we picked up by um, doing an SSK decrease. And an SSK decrease min means slip slip knit so what we're doing is we're going to slip the first two stitches on the needle knit wise as if we were to knit but we're not going to knit them we're just going to lift them off and now i'm pulling on this back strand here because i want um, the yarn not to be not to be too loose and then uh, we're going to knit them by going through both stitches with our left needle and now we're grabbing the yarn and we're pulling it through and that's, that is an SSK decrease. Now this, <laughs> this um, stitch promises to get much too large if we don't keep on tugging on it, but later weave this end in, just make sure to tug on it again so that the stitch is nice and tight here. And now we decreased the extra stitch we picked up. Now we only have two stitches left on this side of the marker. So I'm going to be knitting these I'm slipping my marker and then here again you see here is kind of the gap, the large gap that would leave a hole afterwards. So what we're doing is just regularly knitting the first two stitches. And then here where you see the biggest gap being made, I'm going to knit these two stitches together. So we're not doing an SSK here because an SSK 
um, actually makes a decrease, as you see here, that will lean in the left direction. So this leans to the left side here. And if you knit two together, you get a right leaning decrease and we kind of want them to um, lean into the underarm and not point outwards. So I'm on this side, I'm making a decrease that will lean in the right direction. And that I do by going through both stitches as if I were to knit them like one and I knit these together like they're one stitch. Just as if I were to regularly knit them. And from now on, I don't need to make any decreases anymore. I will just continue knitting um, all the stitches in the round. And um, don't forget to cut off um, the Suri Alpaca. If you had to um, pick up your stitches using the Suri Alpaca, don't forget to cut it off on the right row. Essentially now you will just be knitting in the round in this way for however long you want your sleeve to be. Okay, so um, after here continuing with the sleeve, I knitted for as many rows as I needed before I go to my cuff. And um, don't forget to make the stripes every 10 rows if you wanna do the stripes the same way I did. Um, so I had two more rows in the yellow color here. I knitted 10 rows in white. Then I knitted 10 rows with the lavender color, then another 10 rows with the white, another 10 rows with the blue. And now I'm not going to make the last stripe after 10 rows because I wanted to end in white because up here it also started with the white and um, I think it just looks better. And so for me, after the last blue stripe, I had another 14 rows to go um, before I now kind of switch to the cuff. Now we have a quite a large circumference here and because we have quite a large circumference um, from the sleeve we want to decrease it so that we get like smaller circumference for the cuff of our sweater and for that we're going to change to the six millimeter needles again. If you didn't change your six millimeter needles from before they should still be on the long cable here that you used to finish the end of your sweater. And you will leave them on this long cable because we're going to do a method um, to, that is called the magic loop method. So we may take a method where we take an extra long cable, so our 100 centimeter cable, and, um, and use that to knit the cuff. So I'm going to show you how we do that. Now for me, I know that I need half the amount of stitches I have here for the circumference of my sleeves. So um, I would recommend you do the same thing and just take half the number of stitches you have right now for the circumference of your cuff. So in my case, I now have 47 stitches, meaning it's not an even number to be divided by two. So I will divide um, 46 of these um, 47 stitches by two and then just knit one stitch regularly. So then we have um, 46 divided by two equals 23 plus one stitch is 24. So this is an even number of stitches. And we're already using our six millimeter needles here to do this. If the number deviates by like two or three stitches from what you ca um, calculated your cuff circumference needed to be in width, that doesn't matter. If it's way off, then you can consider maybe doing two rows where in one row you, you decrease just a few stitches and then in, in the other row you knit and two stitches together so half your stitches but um, in my case now I will just be going to do it the way I said earlier. I'm quickly taking my beginning of round marker out because we're transferring to these needles now and now I will always knit two stitches together to decrease the stitches to the amount I need for for my cuff. So I will be knitting two stitches together 12 times and you do that by just going into two stitches at once. So again, um, you're just going to act as if these first two stitches were one and going through two of them and then grabbing your working yarn and pulling it through. And then maybe in the beginning here, um, this needle is still a bit in the way, but it's gonna be gone soon. So <laughs> don't worry about that, but yeah. So I knitted two stitches together and I'm just going to do that again. So it's very simple actually, you just always go into two stitches as if they were one and then knit them. Nothing else is kind of different from regular knitting. 
and I'm doing that across half my stitches. Okay, let's see. If I have 12 stitches here, then I went through half. Good, now I have half the stitches. And now in the magic loop method, we will always knit across half the stitches. And then we pull the entire needle through. So just pull it through enough so that you can create a large loop here like this. And that's fine already. You don't have to pull it the, all the way through to the other needle. That's not necessary, but just that you have like a large loop here that gives you some space here to navigate your needle. And now I will continue knitting across the other, other half of the stitches and letting this loop be in between the needle and kind of the place where I'm knitting. And I will see that I keep some tension here so that I don't create a large gap. So um, let me just show you how I do this. So I'm going to just be knitting two together again. And now once I have this first stitch, I pull tight here so that I see that there's not a large gap here. And then I just continue until my last stitch like this on this needle. Okay, so now I'm at my last stitch. I had an uneven amount of stitches, so I will just be going to knit this last stitch because there isn't any stitch to knit it together anymore. And now um, I'm going to grab the cable back here, pull up this other needle so that it's kind of at the edge of my stitches here. And now I can pull through this needle so that I still have the loop. So you don't want to lose a loop back here. And then I will turn my work so that I'm again at the place where I'm next going to knit. And now you put back in your marker onto your right needle and then pull the right needle through a bit so that you get a loop again here, but still not losing the loop back here. And now I'm sliding up the stitches on my needle to the front, getting my working yarn back and still keep a loop here and have a loop here. And now I'm getting some tension here so that it doesn't create a big gap. And now we're going to be making ribbing for this sleeve. So I'm going to always be knitting one and purling the next as we did on the collar and as we did on the end of the body. And while I knit, as you see, I have a loop here and a loop here. This is why we call this magic loop because I can just give me some volume that I still am able to angle my needles and have wiggle room here. Um, by putting two loops on the outside here with a large cable. And once I arrive, arrive here, I can just slide up the next needle, which I will show you in a second. Okay, now I'm finished with this needle. And now I will be pulling again back on this loop until it kind of arrives here and then pull the needle out, still keeping the loop here, not losing this loop. And now I am turning the work and I'm going to be sliding the stitches onto the left needle again and then pulling out my right needle and give it a loop here, still keeping this loop and then giving tension here again so that it doesn't create a gap. And now I will be continuing with the same pattern of knit one and purl one. Again, using kind of the loop of the cable here to give me enough room that I can maneuver my hands right and just do this until the end of the round. So if you count it correctly, the last stitch should be a purl stitch. And now I'm getting my marker out here and put it onto the right needle. And then again, the same as before, pull out the cable, pull out this needle here and turning the work, sliding the stitches up on this needle, still always keeping the loop back here. Then I'm getting my working yarn and I'm giving myself a little loop here so that I can move my needle again. And then I just continue the same way. And that's it. That's all you really need to know to do the magic loop method. It's actually quite an easy method. Might sound intimidating, a magic loop, but it's very, very easy. Maybe that's the reason they call it magic. And yeah, so you just continue doing this exact same thing for however many rows you need to arrive at the full length of your sleeve. And 
then when you did that we will do another Italian bind off but I will meet you back there. Okay so I'm trying the sweater on again to see if the sleeve length is right. Now it looks a bit short for me but um, as I mentioned before the sleeve is still going to grow a bit so um, I'm, I think I'm going to add like one or two more rows so that I'm on the sure side but I'm I'm pretty certain that once the sweater is blocking so when we're washing it that it will arrive at the right length but yeah so before binding off for the sleeve I would recommend that you try it on again just so you know that you have kind of the right length but I think it's looking good so far <laughs> um, I'm quite excited to be finished with the first sleeve okay we're at the end of the cuff now and I've, as before with the body, I've left a tail that is about two and a half times as long as the circumference of our cuff. Now we're just actually going to be doing the exact same thing as we did on the end of the body. So I threaded in my darning needle and um, I'm not going to explain it to you step by step again, but I'm going to put up the chart for you again here um, for you to do it on your own. But first we have to set up stitches where we go to through this first stitch here knitwise uh, for the Italian bind off and then go through the second one sorry through the first one purlwise and through the second one knitwise and come out in the back and now we're going to be repeating the sequence as we did before so when the first stitch on the needle is a knit stitch we're going to slip it off knitwise and go through the third stitch purlwise and pull the yarn through and then when the first stitch is a purl stitch we're going to be taking it off purlwise and coming in here through the middle grabbing the front leg of the second purl stitch there and pulling it through and just continue like this with all stitches until we're at the end okay we're back last two stitches so we're taking the first one off again knitwise we're going through this first knitted stitch we made here and we're going to go through this front leg and pull it through as if it were still on the needle where we would take it purlwise and then we're getting the last stitch off purlwise putting the needle away and then we're going through the gap of the purl stitch here Okay, and now that we finished, um, I'm going to get the yarn out in the back and then the same way as we did on the um, ribbing for the body, use the end of the strand um, right away to weave in the yarn here, to weave in the yarn end because we're going to have to be doing that anyway. Once you did that, then you finished your first sleeve and then you're going to make the second sleeve in the exact same way as you did your first sleeve. So repeat all the steps just on the other side and there's no reverse thinking or anything here. You just do the exact same thing as we did um, for the other sleeve and then in the end also binding off in the same way. So everything the same. And once you did that, you're finished with your sweater. So um, next time we're going to see each other, you will have made the second sleeve again. If you need to watch the steps again, then go ahead and do that. Make sure to go through the sweater and weave in, just in this way I'm doing here right now, weave in all the loose ends you still have on your sweater. And if sometimes, if you're not sure, um, when you've woven it in, if you've done it correct, you can always check on the outside. If nothing is visible, then it's fine, then you did, did it all right. And if something is visible, then just go a few steps back and weave, in, weave it in differently. But yeah, that's all you do. And so the next time we'll see each other, you will have finished your second sleeve as well. And then we're going to be finishing everything off. Okay, I have finished my sweater now. So um, sleeves on both sides done. So something you'll notice now is that some stitches kind of still stick out a little. They are a bit more bumpy than others. Um, and that is because when you knit and form your stitches into this new shape, there is like tension 
on the yarn. This means that the entire sweater is a bit more stiff than it will end up being and the stitches are a bit more irregular. So what we're going to do now to counteract this is we're going to do something called blocking, which is basically submerging our sweater in water for 15 minutes, then pressing out the water and laying it out flat to dry. And when we do that, we give the yarn the chance to go into the new form um, so that the fabric softens, um, it will feel softer afterwards and that the stitches can relax and then they become more regular and also the pieces we knit tend to grow a bit when they're made out of um, wool or any kind of um, animal fiber they tend to grow a bit because the fabric relaxes and stretches a bit so this is why this is why I'm not really worried about this sweater here kind of always pulling up so the sleeve may, might look a bit short now but it isn't after I have I have blocked it it will be in the perfect length so let's go on to the blocking. This is a really essential process. Um, again, it makes the fabric look more even. It makes the fabric softer. And this is kind of something you always do when you finish something to get it into its final shape. So this is the last step. And blocking is also kind of the same way you will wash your sweater later. So if you ever feel the need to wash your sweater, you do the same process. But please don't ever machine wash a wool sweater, except for if the yarn is super wash yarn. And even then, wash it on low temperature, a delicate or something, and especially don't tumble dry it. So if your sweater um, gets dirty at some point, spot clean this is kind of what wool is made for so you have to imagine that <laughs> wool was on a sheep or an alpaca or whatever before and they don't <laughs> go into a washing machine right they have a natural oil in their in their fleece which is called lanolin and this is kind of antibacterial and also dirt repellent so spot cleaning will almost always get any dirt out the only situations you wash it in is when you can't get a smell out of it or um, kind of if if you feel like the shape um, has changed a lot over time with wearing it, then you do the same process of blocking again, which is the way you wash your knits. But don't machine wash it, just please don't <laughs> trust me with that. So now I'm going to show you the process of blocking. And once we did that, then we're actually truly finished with our sweater. Fill your sink with cold or lukewarm water. You can also add some wool detergent if you want to. Don't use regular laundry detergent as this can damage the natural oils that are in the wool. Then add your sweater and fully submerge it under water. Press out the remaining air. Make sure that the sink is full enough to cover the entire sweater. And once you did that, let it soak for 15 to 20 minutes. And now you also see why it's essential to block your sweater. There is a lot of dirt and also kind of dust from being stored, etc. that can still come out. So it's really good to do the blocking. And because this water was so dirty, I decided to rinse the sweater. And as you see, after the second rinsing, the water came out way clearer. And then I pressed out all the water, but make sure not to twist your fabric or anything because then you will actually stretch it. Once you've pressed out everything you can press out, you will transfer it onto a dry towel. Place it on the towel and already put it into the shape you want it. Then get a second towel and put it on top of it. Now you will roll the towels together to make a towel burrito. And then once you did that, you will step on the towel to press out the excess water. Make sure to twist the towel burrito again and step on it from the other side. Then take the sweater out of the two towels and then place it somewhere flat to dry. What I usually do is I take out my laundry hamper and I don't fully unfold it, but rather keep it closed so that I can place the sweater on top. So this gives me a nice grid where I can place my sweater onto flat and it can dry there with enough air from below and above. If you don't have a laundry hamper like this, you can also place it on a plastic surface or any other non-porous surface to dry. Make sure to put it in the right shape when you leave it on there to dry. So really adjust the shape so that it sits correctly because if it dries in any wrong shape it will stay like that afterwards and you really don't want that. This is also why you shouldn't hang it to dry because if you hang it to dry it will stretch a lot. So really don't do that. Place it flat somewhere and let it there until it is really fully dried. This is the final product. This is the sweater after we finished it. The sleeves are even a bit too long maybe but it's actually quite cozy if they are this long and I really like the width and the general fit of the sweater so yeah 
I'm really happy. I hope you're also very happy with your sweater. I hope you liked this video and this entire series. It was a lot of fun to make, but also a lot of work to make. But I really did enjoy it and I hope you get a lot out of it. Um, if you did, please let me know. Um, leave a comment down below and subscribe to my channel. Also, go, go over to my channel and check out the video I uploaded yesterday where I recommend 11 cardigan and sweater knitting patterns to knit this spring to give you some inspiration on what to do next. Some of them are also very easy and beginner friendly, so go ahead and check that out. And yeah, that's it for this week. Um, I hope I'll see you back next week and have a lovely time. Thank you.